John Kay, who you may remember is the uh, the head of Spumco and uh, creator of such cartoons as Ren and Stimpy, probably one of the greatest cartoons of our childhood and s screwed a lot of us up in, in just the best ways. Uh, John, thank you for coming in. Thanks it's, for having me, Kale. It's a pleasure. Good to uh, be here. And, and thanks for bringing in all these toys. You. You, uh, do you have, actually, you know what, which one of these is your favorite toy? My favorite toys are actually the toys of, uh, 60s cartoon characters. 50s which, and 60s like cartoon Like, which characters. ones? Fred Flintstone, I'm uh -huh. a big Fred Flintstone man. Barney Rubble, they used to make Barney Rubble toys where he had green hair. Yeah, in the what? old days, it... yeah, in the old days, they always made toys off-model. They never quite matched what they looked like in the cartoons, and that's the way I like them. And why did they, why did that happen? No one knows. The mystery makes it even cooler. Obviously, now the animator is getting a little bit more say into what's what's going on in these toys. Did you, how much hands-on did you have with these toys? Uh, well, I designed the toys. Um, a genius did the boxes. Dave Sheldon. Dave Sheldon was one of the guys that did a lot of the fake commercials on uh, Ren and Stimpy. This is Jimmy the Idiot Boy, and he's a he's an idiot. This is very educational. These toys because it has. A graph here showing you like where everybody stands oh, on the wow. bell curve, and it explains the three different types of uh, intellectually uh, handicapped. I can, you can't say handicapped anymore, right? Uh, no, you, you just say you like say now? Uh, just different, a little bit different. Different, special, special. There you different go. Different degrees of special. So not only do you have a fun toy to play with, but uh, you can learn things too. Speaking of that. Uh, you can get one of these. There's a your Kickstarter. You're actually working on a project right now, uh, and it, why don't you tell us a little bit about that project? Uh, it's a project starring my favorite character. You might recognize him from Ren and Stimpy. This is George Licker, American, and this is wow. one of the toys. And you can see that he's a talking George Licker here. <laughs> I don't know ass. if you're gonna hear this. <laughs> and he has four wonderful sayings. He's a very manly guy. He has more things to say than that. <laughs> but he really wants us to take it like a man. See? Ah, uh, he's stuck in that one. But uh, George George Licker is uh, inspired by someone close to you. Yes, he is. This guy right oh, here. There he is. It's... That's my dad. Yeah, my dad was a very manly guy. He is a very manly guy. He's st he's still kicking. He lived. Everything was by the rules. He was also very thrifty. Uh, he grew up in the Depression. He was, my uh, parents' generation had to scrape for food. My dad lived on a farm that you know, didn't grow all that much. And one of the ways he saved money was he wouldn't buy brand name products. Right? Because brand name, like if you buy a Heinz ketchup, that's a lot more expensive than Hunt's catsup. Right. Well, at the supermarket that, that uh, we lived near, they always had a shelf at the, at the very back, at the very bottom shelf, and it was filled with these cans that have lost their labels. And so uh, they would just mark them down to five cents or 10 cents or something like that. My dad bought all these things, right? But we never knew what was in them. So Although my dad thought that he knew what was in them. These do not look appetizing. My dad would always guess it was something beautiful. Like, you know, I'll bet you it's like a fruit salad or it's a... Oh, it always was something nice. Beefaroni or something. You know what? At least he's, uh, he's, he's never got was. optimism. So this one, we're going to guess is a fruit salad. That's, fruit that's, salad. We're going to go with fruit salad on this one. Fruit salad. Um, Let's That'd see. be a miracle if it was. <laughs> oh my god, I hope it is. This doesn't look like fruit salad. Hey, no matter what it is, you have to eat it. Oh, it's pork and beans. I guess I'll eat a little They're bit. They're flesh colored. Yeah, this is That's, not. It's not a brand label. This is this not is, at that color. This is uh, this is disgusting. And and you'd cook it though, right? Oh yeah, we usually cook that now. Unless it was fruit salad, but it never was fruit salad. That's not too bad. Yeah, you like that? I mean, yeah. I mean, I've I've had worse. But anyway, okay. So this the whole series is based on your father, then. George Licker is is inspired by my dad, but he's see my dad's Canadian. I'm Canadian. George Licker's American, so you know George thinks that everybody in Canada is a dirty commie, right? <laughs> because we have health care. You know, the Americans Americans hate being healthy, right? They don't like health care. <laughs> they just want to die in the street, get cancer. <laughs> it's your own fault. Yep. So how do we? How do we get these? Like, how do we get some of the, like, I want these pogs. And pogs. I want, how do I get these? We have a Kickstarter campaign. Mm -hmm. I'm sure everybody in your audience knows what Kickstarter yeah. is, crowdfunding. Kickstart it. So, if you help me get this cartoon made, you get prizes, and there are different levels of prizes. That was uh, Jimmy the Idiot Boy, right? This is Jimmy of the future. <laughs> this is what idiots are going to evolve into a billion years from now. Oh, man. Yeah, this is a far superior idiot to, than what we have today. That's what some uh, YouTube viewers look like, actually, I yeah. think. What's the, what's the minimum and what's the maximum? Well, the minimum is 
$1. Uh-huh. And what do you get for that? You get a digital copy of the cartoon when it's finished. Every oh, wow. dollar counts in this economy. So what's the what's the top prize? Like the top what, prize? What is the somebody got thing? the top prize today? Oh, already? Yeah, it was ten thousand dollars to get uh, all the other prizes. Plus, you get not only your name in the credit, but I'm going to animate uh, a husband and wife, and uh, so yeah, they're going to be animated as like the main you know high roller uh, sponsors of the thing. Uh, how long are you planning on having this series last? Is there an episode limit that you want to reach? This or? is one episode. Oh, because you're just going to make one then? The one, if it works, if this goes through, and it is going to go through, we can tell by today, then we might do this as an ongoing thing. And in fact, next, next round, I might do a Kickstarter campaign to make really cool prizes. So I, 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 we, I have to ask, so what is uh, the future of Ren and Stimpy? Is there a future for Ren and Stimpy? Well, here's the thing. Had I owned Ren and Stimpy, we'd still be making them today. There'd be 20 years worth of Ren and Stimpy's. And it would have naturally evolved. I mean, it was, it was evolving from the first season to the second season. You could see that every episode was a little different than the previous episode. So it was progressing step by step. So had that happened over the last 20 years, there'd be a ton of Ren and Stimpy cartoons if I owned them. But the problem is with television, with movies, with the corporate system, creators don't own their own stuff usually. You usually have to sell it out and then it's out of your control and you can't do anything with them. That's what's great about Kickstarter is you're dealing directly with the audience. If you're in, if you're in television, you have a, a ton of middlemen between the creative people and the audience who wants to watch what you do. So there are all these people in the middle second guessing everything and they think the public won't like this and they won't like that and you know, it's just a nightmare. So this I way, it's direct to the audience right. and the creator ends up still owning his own properties. So if it's popular, I can make more and I don't have to worry about somebody telling me what to do and what not to do, except for the audience. Yeah, and uh, the internet is, is a brand new place that animation is actually thriving in. I mean, that we're, seeing, we're seeing animators that can appeal right to their audience and create viral videos. And uh, what has been your experience with the internet and creating cartoons? Well, I got in actually too early, about 1996. Oh. We made some George Lecker cartoons and we made a series called Weekend Pussy Hunt. And, uh, and it was going, it was going great. It was, they were the first flash cartoons on the internet. And then that crash happened in 2000 and everybody just went out of business and nobody was putting money into entertainment in the internet for like till now, till the last couple of years. So maybe the time is right now. And the Kickstarter thing was like the missing ingredient. Crowdfunding was the missing ingredient. Just going directly to the audience. Yeah, and, and them getting something, uh, Instagram gratification yeah, you're, you're is Yeah, you're never going to get this on TV. Right. You're never going to get what you want on TV because there's too many people stopping it from happening. Well, how has your animation changed if we haven't been keeping up with what you've been doing? How, how, is, uh, how have you evolved? Well, you could watch that Simpsons uh, couch gag. That's right. You know, I don't know. I can't analyze my own style. I don't even think I have a style. But the cartoons I make are not just my style. They're the product of all the artists that work on, work on them. You know, I used to give people credit up front so you knew who the artists were. And uh, that was, I mean, that's what they used to do in cartoons in the 40s, the 1940s. You know, a Chuck Jones cartoons looks different than a Bob Clampett or a Tex Avery cartoon, even if they're all doing Bugs Bunny. You can tell them apart. And uh, the way TV works now in movies is they want everybody to do everything exactly the same way. So, you know, one season of a cartoon on TV, 10 years later, pretty much looks the same. Right. Whereas if you look at early Bugs Bunny cartoons or Mickey Mouse, they change from cartoon to cartoon. They, they got, as the artists got better, so did the cartoons. And then the characters would change along with them. Yeah, and that, uh, that actually happened on The Simpsons. If you see the first few episodes, they just they look like a five-year-old drew them, kind of. Um, those are my favorite ones. <laughs> yeah, those are great. The one Because you can see all the individual artists. Their eyes artists. get bigger, yeah. You know, part, part of it's necessity. When you have to start putting out 26 episodes a year or something, you have to come up with some kind of assembly line uh, system, especially if you're going to send work overseas. So here's how we, this is exactly how we did Brennan Snippy. We would pose it all out like this in pencil, but then we would send these drawings to overseas studios who would then do the in-betweens and animate it and stuff. So this cartoon is, is drawn traditionally, but we're going to animate it like I animated wow. The Simpsons. How uh, were you approached for that? Oh, Al Jean, head of story department, yeah. asked me if I was interested in doing a couch gag. So he invited me down to Fox and I had lunch with him and Matt. And we just knocked around some ideas. I brought a lined pad and I drew some sketches. Everybody threw ideas in. We decided what it was going to be about right there at lunch. And I basically went back home and animated it. That's fantastic. And obviously there's a little bit of CG 
in that. Oh, or, John you know, did yeah. the uh, John is the a little season switch. effect. Go! And that's him. Pointing at his John. crotch. Nice job, John. Yeah. Give the girls a nice nice shot of that. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, I, I look forward to because it looks like you're really close to your goal on this one. Uh, you, you're not far off. There's seven days left as of this filming. This will probably go up two days later. So However, five. if we get 50% more, we're going to do another cartoon to go with it. From oh. scratch. There you a, go. A little bit shorter. But, and we're going to do one of my hot chick characters, Sodi Pot. Oh, yeah. It's something they go. never let me do on TV. They never let me animate hot chicks. And I love to draw hot chicks. Yeah. Disney used to do cute girls in cartoons. Mm -hmm. Warner's did it. Everybody loves it. Tex hey, Avery did it. Ariel's like naked. She's only wearing a bra. Who is? Ariel from Little Mermaid. Oh, right, right. Yeah, only yeah. wearing a bra. Yeah, a lot, a lot of kids got their first boner with that, I think. Uh, yeah, well, she... <laughs> <laughs> Can you right. say that on the internet? <laughs> Hell yeah. Um, so anyway, so let's uh, go ahead and grab this can. We're going to cheers to Cans Without Labels and to John K. Thanks for coming in. Cheers. Thank you, Kale. Yeah, we'll catch you later. Thanks. I'm going to finish up these beans. <laughs>